When I ask people in the construction world, what is their biggest issue? I get one of two answers. The first is we all need more customers. All businesses have this issue. But the second is the topic of today's video. That's how you can help control your labor costs and even get more work done with less people, a lot less people. So when I dig down into what is keeping you from growing your business, today is more about finding people than finding work. But what if we could help you find a way to take at least 20% off your labor cost? If you do that, for most construction companies, you would more than double your profits. You know, we've come up with a secret that really isn't a secret. We're just taking what has been used in the world of software for years and applying it to the construction world. And that secret, in case you're curious, it's called Scrum. Now, we're not going to talk about rugby, although that is where the term comes from. We're going to talk about a methodology that you can use to manage projects that take a huge amount of waste out of your process. It's a system that could be a secret to dominating your local market. The truth is you'll be years, even more than years, if ever, that the majority of your competition will ever get around to using this strategy. And you know, the reason is really pretty simple. It's a system and systems need to be managed, not something the majority of construction companies do even sort of well. So if you go about doing this, just think what it might mean for your company. So there are 10 parts to installing Scrum. Three are decisions about who's on the team, and the other seven are the steps using Scrum in your business. So I wanna take you through a short introduction. So here's, let's get started. So here's where we're gonna start. For your team, you're going to need three pieces. You're going to need a project manager. So the project manager is the person who is responsible for the outcome you're after. That's the person who is going to set the project and set the goals and set the stories and, and make sure that everything that needs to be done is being done. And then we're going to have the team. Now the team, this is often in a construction company, the people who are actually doing the job. It's the crew, it's the folks who are working on a job at one time. Now a team might be two people, it might be four people, it might be seven people, but the teams need to be relatively small. And then finally, there's the scrum master. And what the scrum master is, that's the person who's responsible for planning and doing the scrum. And typically it's the four person for that team. So those are the three people that we need to have on the team. So now let's look at the steps it takes to actually put scrum in place. So the first thing we do is we start with creating a backlog of everything to be done. Now, what we do is we list all the stuff that needs to be done and we just put on the board or using post-it notes or a whiteboard, whatever you want to use, you can do just list everything, all the steps, all the tasks, all the things that need to be done for a particular job. The second thing we do is we refine, we estimate the backlog. In other words, we prioritize what's in the backlog. So we do the most important things first, and then we estimate how long it's going to take for each task in the backlog to be done. Now, there's a methodology that we teach when we go into our deep course about this. But for now, all you need to do is say, I think we can accomplish these tasks over the next two weeks. And those go into what you're working on for the next sprint. Number three is we plan the sprint. This is where you take all the things out of the backlog that you think you can get accomplished in the next two weeks. Now, I'm going to tell you that when you start using Scrum, this is a part that becomes the most frustrating because nobody ever gets it right. You're going to overestimate how much work you can do. You're going to underestimate how much work you can do, but you're really going to get it right. It's going to take you two, three, four, five, six sprints before you finally start getting it more accurately. And actually the goal is, is to increase the amount of stuff that you can do every sprint. And there's a method that we do to do this. And next thing on the, on the list is we make work visible. So what you do is use what's called a scrum board. Now a scrum board can be a whiteboard. It can be just a uh, post-it notes with three columns in it. And the three columns are backlog, doing, and done. And what we do is, is we plan the sprint, we start off with taking the things that are in the backlog that we're going to work on during the next two weeks. We put them into doing. And as we get them done, they go into the done column. So we move things in. So you think things moving across. 
Now, the next part of doing Scrum is we hold what's called daily stand-up meetings. At the most, this is 15 minutes long. And here's what you're going to do at the daily stand-up meeting. You're going to ask, what did we do yesterday? What will we do today as a team to finish the sprint? And three, is there any obstacle blocking you or the team from finishing the sprint? You go around very quickly and do that. And if there's an obstacle, you'll probably deal with it after the meeting to get it out of the way. But wouldn't it be nice to get the obstacles out of the way every day instead of waiting a one, two, or three weeks before we finally get around to dealing with them? Just think about what that will do alone to increase the velocity of how you get things done. The next step after that is we do the sprint review or demo. This is where the team assembles to demonstrate what they've done over the last two weeks. Now, it's probably going to be done on site. And it might be done with the project manager. It might just be done with the team. So everybody takes a look to see what they've accomplished. And then the next thing we do is we look at what's called a retrospective. Now, the retrospective, in my experience, is just really, really, really important. It's where you look back over the last two weeks and you say, what did we do well? What didn't go so well? What can we do to make the stuff that didn't go so well start going well? And how can we improve on the stuff that went well? The truth is the real value in Scrum is focusing on what went well and expanding on that. Fixing stuff has to be done, but if that's where you put all your focus, you're not going to get nearly the results that you could get. So it's really important when you're doing your retrospective that you look at the system and not the person. Realize this is not a blame game. It's about looking at the systems you use to run your business and how can we improve those systems to make them better. And finally, we want to focus on what worked more than what didn't work. That's a really important thing. So as you see, you know, although it sounds complicated and there's a few moving parts, it's actually a relatively simple system that will get you results. So here's what I want you to do now. I want you to set a time with me to talk about how you can use Scrum in your company. You know, it's slightly different for every construction company we talk with. Next thing I want you to do is I want you to understand who needs to be on your team in the seven steps using Scrum. Now, I have a great infographic for that that shows you all the seven steps and all of the three people you need on your team. And finally, go slow in implementing. There will be learning along the way. You don't want to just wholesale implement this at once. Start in a small part of your company with a small team, do some experiments, make sure it works, and move on. You know, in 20 minutes, you can find out if using Scrum is right for you. So contact me at jpatrick at stage2planning.com to set up a time for us to talk. In the meantime, if you're not ready to talk, download our free infographic on the Scrum process. It'll give you a cheat sheet for the success path in putting Scrum in your company and then start enjoying the benefits decreasing your labor costs. Just think what you can do with this. Here are some things you could do. You could pay yourself more. You could pay your employees the very top of the range in your community. That makes you a really attractive place to work. And by using Scrum, you're going to be treating your employees more humanely, and that will make your place an attractive place to work. Between those two things, you're going to find people will start knocking on your door to come to work with you because you'll have a great reputation. You could undercut pricing for your competitors and still come up with a huge increase in profits. Or you could just grow your business and not have to add any employees. Or you could do all four. So after you think about using Scrum, why don't you scroll down and let me know what you think about instituting Scrum in your company. Hey, this is Josh Patrick. You're at the Sustainable Business. Thanks a lot for stopping by. I hope to see you back here really soon.